don't just think about the destination, but try to enjoy the process, the process of learning and growing. I'm Maud Leger, and this is the Realtors Conspiracy Podcast, where we crack the code to real estate success. Learn from top realtors, entrepreneurs, and innovators about how to grow your business as we discuss real estate success stories, mindset, processes, motivations, and the key to their success. Check out our podcast episodes every Monday to crack the code to success for your real estate business. This week, I'm speaking with Isabella from Blue Water Performance Coaching. Isabella helps businesses with their strategic blueprint and offers purpose-driven coaching. She shared tips and advice on how to keep focused, keep motivated, and streamline your day-to-day to succeed. So let's get to my chat with Isabella. Hi, Isabella. Thanks for joining us today. Let's jump right in and tell us how can realtors stay on top of their game? Awesome. Thank you so much, Moat, uh, for having me. And hi to all your uh, amazing viewers and audience. Happy to be here today. Um, you know, staying on top of the game, uh, it's, it's getting harder and harder as market is definitely um, uh, competing a lot. And there is more competition each and every day as the market is seems globally, everything is open. So it, it is become challenging. And I think this is where we have to be really mindful, uh, whether it, someone is a realtor or a business owner, always goes back, what is your bigger purpose? Because then I find the money will follow. Mm-hmm. When you clarify your purpose and who you're serving and why, you're able then really be strategically focusing on everything you do. When you can find your niche, you become an expert in a certain field. And because it's also fueling your purpose as a default, that becomes your competitive advantage. Nice. Thank you. What do you think um, is a way for business owner and entrepreneur to be strategic, to set that strategic plan together? It starts honestly with a setting up a strategic, and we like to do it on one piece of paper that you can print and put it on the wall. So it reminds you, uh, but it's a strategic blueprint. What is your mission or what is your purpose? What is your why? Why are you getting out of bed? Is it the financial outcome or is it something bigger? Because then you're able to then look at each day or a week, depending how you're, you know, how you like to manage your calendar, but then you can be really strategic on every action that you take. I like to always start with what is absolutely, you know, you're looking at it. I like to call them energy, energy vampires. Yes. What are my energy vampires? Is it the social media? And then I'm very strategic how I spend my time And I make social media work for me. I find, you know, having the plan, strategic plan with first starting with a purpose, then starting what is your goal, and then having pillars that help you fulfill the purpose and the goal. It's, if you're just working and burning out is no fun. So you have to put it as part of the plan and setting consistent practices. Do you help people put the actions for each pillar? If it's the revenue, the self-care, the community uh, to fill those in? Yes, absolutely. We actually have a masterclass program. We have um, one that runs uh, four weeks or eight weeks, but we definitely can help um, someone with their strategic blueprint whether it's for their business or their personal life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with, um, especially if someone working for themselves, um, business life, it's, it's a combination, right? So how do you still can achieve that work-life balance, even Mm -hmm. though as an entrepreneur, sometimes it's, it's hard, right? (laughs) Yeah. If you're not measuring something, it's not going to be done. So you have to be able to measure your performance, being consistent and being kept accountable. So, you know, we have some clients that hire us to really be also their their coach and keeping them after they've done the plan. You know, it's great. But if there is no execution, then um, (laughs) it's not really a good plan. So how do you really we, we call it, you know, feet on the ground. 
that it's nice to have the vision, but now, okay, let's talk about what are the realistic actions, not just mm -hmm. actions that, you know, your life is not allowing you to, identifying any new opportunities, gaps, and keeping you accountable. That's amazing. You're bringing up so many other questions for me, right? Yeah. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, what would you define success? What is success for an entrepreneur, a business owner? Uh, great question. Great question. Definitely, I mean, for some, it's definitely, you know, um, financial aspect comes to the success, but we're finding as, uh, you know, with um, the millennials, um, uh, right, the, the younger um, business owners, they are trying to achieve more of um, work-life balance, um, achieve um, thinking about sustainability, and that social impact. So finding time, so it's not just, you know, no matter what, I'm going to work and I wanna make sure I, let's say, sell, I don't know, a hundred houses this year, right? But it's really about, okay, defining success in a way, am I, is the social impact uh, critical to my well being? Am I consciously building those practices to my every day? designing it versus leaving to to default we're finding more and more like we have so many clients that you know are, are doing great on their business side but they're burning out mm. so then we're redesigning few things around their plan and what we're starting doing a lot of times um you know everyone has this crazy to-do list yes we're, we're starting to scrap to-do list and we're starting <laughs> and not to-do list. What is it that you will not be doing because you were able to identify those energy vampires? I love that, I don't know why, but this yeah. is my go-to. What is your energy vampire? Being mindful, no to it, and also setting non-negotiables. I love that. For me, non-negotiable is I need to drink my water. Also, I want to be inspired. As sometimes I find, especially nowadays, we, we all need a little uplift and yeah. inspiration. So mindfully, every day, whether it's in the morning or in the evening, I always find half an hour for an inspiration. It could be reading a, a book or listening to a podcast that I can uh, learn something new, but something inspiring that it's uplifting and makes me a better person and a better human. Nice. I love it. Very cool. You talked about accountabilities and people ask you yes. for accountabilities. How do you keep your clients accountable? Okay. So again, <laughs> going, it goes back to a plan with some clients. We, we do a weekly check-in or a bi-weekly check-in, depending on, you know, how, how our scope of work is defined with specific clients. But we find uh, a lot of time uh, as someone, it's either an executive or a business owner, they have a whole team reporting to them. They don't really find time for themselves and often they prioritize everybody else. So at times, right, you probably know how that goes. At times it's like, oh, but I have every intention to do this. But then a week later, it's like, shoot, I didn't get a chance to get it done. So when we schedule these check-ins, when you're seeing that in your calendar and you know Isabella is going to call you up on your task at hand, you're more likely to achieve it. Yeah. And we make sure that it's, it's, that it's realistic. Yeah. Because, right, like it's, it's okay to have big dreams but if your life or your business, depending on what's going on and how is your business is set up, do you have other employees to help you? Are you on your own and so forth? Uh, we really understand based on our also experience, what can be achieved? What is reasonable? But having that other someone to, to hold you accountable, I think it goes for both. It's almost like, you know, yeah. <laughs> You don't, you don't want to disappoint someone, but also we are able to check in saying, hey, do you need more time? Or is mm -hmm. there something we can help you with to redefine that task? Because, you know, maybe there is a, 
lack of skill, lack of resource, there's many reasons. Or do you need to redefine your calendar to create time to complete that task? That's why we say always go back. What is that mission? What is that purpose? So the next thing you're going to say yes to, that better be feeding that mission or purpose nice. or, or is better to be in one of the pillars that it's identified for that specific action for that specific day. Love it. So everything you do, it's got to have a purpose. That's it. Every day, check. That's it. <laughs> yes. Always ask yourself, is that going to really impact what I said I'm going to do and feed my purpose? And if it's not, put it away. Do nice. it later. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you. What do you say are three key action every entrepreneur should be doing to grow their business? Do a strategic plan, have a blueprint for your business and not just for a year. I, I would say it, it should look um, to three to five years. Okay. So at least, at least you don't have all, you don't have to have all the details filled in, but at least you you see where you want to go and all those details with, you know, have an idea of some actions and so forth. Um, but you can fill those little tasks later on, but have an idea where you want to go. Yeah. Then, so that's number one. And, and I think I always say blueprint needs to be attached to the purpose because you gotta, you gotta know why you're doing what you're doing. Right? Is it the goal, financial goal? Is it something else? And what that, that looks like, defining that success. That's all in a blueprint. So, so have that. Also, really understand your target audience. Mm -hmm. Who are you serving? You know, people run away from pain. Mm -hmm. So understand their pain points. And they run towards desires. So whoever is in your target audience, know what they're going through and understand any of their pains and desires because sometimes they might be changing but by understanding them then you can serve better nice. you can add that value we deal with you know a lot of entrepreneurs that are just burning out like almost giving up on their businesses because they just they much. haven't built it. it's too much they are trying to do everything well they didn't have the strategic plan to to really focus so they were trying to do too much but they forgot about themselves as an entrepreneur if you don't take care of yourself mm -hmm. no one else will so really prioritizing and i find what gets schedule mode gets done true so schedule self-care so the three things have a strategic blueprint. It doesn't have to have all the details, but at least know your purpose, where you're going. Two, kind of be crazy about your customer, your target audience, to really understand them and know what are their needs so you can serve them better. And then three, prioritize self-care and schedule it, please. Nice. Not by default, but schedule it in your time. Nice. Time blocking. I love it. That's amazing. <laughs> You're welcome. What's the best advice you've ever received in your career? One of the best. There, there was some good ones along the way. Nice. But, you know, so in the past, I really struggled with saying no. Mm. I almost thought that if I say no, um, and I'm not going to get emotional, right? But it's like, that someone won't like me mm. or they'll think less of me. But I find that actually people respect someone even more when you're able to say no. And I've struggled with it in the past, but the advice, and I don't even know who told me, it's like, Isabella, you really need to start, right? Like, because whether you're going to burn out or you're not going to get your own priorities done, mm -hmm. if you start, if you, if you just continue saying yes to things. So um, that I would say that was the best advice uh, for, for starting to say no and 
uh, setting those boundaries. And this is why now, you know, I'm helping others to say, hey, what is your not to do list? Mm. Right? What are you going to say no? And what are your boundaries so that you can show up to things that really matter better? Mm -hmm. So I would say that that would be one of those best advices, just learning to say no. That's amazing. How can entrepreneurs and business owners keep motivated? So there are two things where focus goes, energy flows and vice versa. So every day to keep motivated, uh, you need a strong morning routine that sets your mindset right and keeps your energy through the day and setting reminders for the phone. The biggest motivation and the like, biggest um, advice that I have for everyone is really don't just think about the destination, but try to enjoy the process, the process of learning and growing. And of course, crappy things will happen but how we're able to shake it off nice. and take the learning from it and apply it and adapt so we can grow and always recognizing your progress. I love it. That's amazing. That's great advice. Thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge with us today. You're welcome. My pleasure. I'm, I'm happy to, uh, you know, hopefully inspire your audience. And even if they can learn one thing, that's my job is done. Nice. So I love you. it. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Subscribe to our podcast, Realtors Conspiracy, today.